Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. The beer stuffs are up in here. We do it quite a bit with the beers and stuffs and things. Tonight, we're going to be doing a little bit of Doppelbach hopeful goodness in the form of Pariah Brewing. This is their Silence of the Bach. Look at that label. It's pretty fantastic stuff. Um, comes courtesy of Brian from Pariah. He sends off beers every so often. And this came with a hazy. Um, excited for the hazy, but there's something about this that has me really, really hot and bothered. I'm a Doppelbach guy. We're a week removed, or a week away from Christmas, I should say. And I'm just kind of chomping at a bit for a sweet, delicious Doppelbach. Now, there's more to this. Let's read about it. It says down here, it says, from the terrifying minds of Pariah Brewing on the back here, it says, a silence of the Bach Bavarian style Doppelbach. There's a whole bunch of words here. You can go watch my unboxing or read that if you want to. It's very hard to read. I'm not going to go over it. But from what it says on here, they're kind of doing their homage to uh, the old celebrator, which I think is the kind of end all be all of Doppelbach. So we'll see how this sucker lands. Should have done it, you know, maybe a side by side with a celebrator, but I, you know, doing a brewery, small brewery in the United States, doing a Doppelbach. I think they deserve their own platform, let's put it that way. But label wise, it's a crazy goat. Red and black. What do you want me to say? I dig it. See? Or match with the shirt. Beer wise, it's exactly what I want my double box to look like. This rich um, mahogany brown kind of melange in the body. Or this is going to look pretty much just all darkness to me, to you guys. But when I actually look at it through the edge and stuff like that, it has that rich mahogany in color, had that nice almost index, a little bit bigger kind of head dissipating, super creaminess, super fluffiness. Not super. Um, what's what I'm looking for? It doesn't come off light or thin both from a, a, a body color nor kind of density when you swirl it around it seems like it has a little bit of heft to it which is where my doppel box or I, where i like my doppel box to land some doppel box can be a little bit lighter maybe a little bit like kind of um leaner i guess you'd say i'm in that celebrator camp that's what this basically looks like so we're off to a very good start let's give it a big whirl let's get a nose yeah i mean it's giving you everything you really and I want to say you, I'm saying me, but um, what I really look for in a really well done Doppelbach, which is this nice, rich, bready, almost, you know, dinner in a glass kind of beer kind of going on here. You have this rich, caramelized, almost <sighs> leaning into a desserty breadiness, but stopping short of a brown bread, sugar, brown sugar, brown bread, sh sugary kind of breadiness. A nice kind of like little bit of spiciness to it, a la like a molasses kind of thing going on here. And just really comes off with a little bit of roasted malts, that rich kind of brown bready kind of maltiness, that little bit of molasses kind of spiciness. It really comes off as this kind of almost winter spiced beer, but without the spices. It's, it's deriving those kind of notes, those kind of vibes without having been dosed with those kind of things. So very much... Um, dinner in a glass. That's what a Doppelbach is. In this rich kind of just delectable, dense, thick richness. A little bit more roastiness than I typically get from a classic Doppelbach. Almost flirting into soft little coffee vibes. Let's just dive in. Cheers, y'all. Mm. That's what I'm looking for, man. You know, Doppelbach is very much... It's very much open for interpretation. You know, you you see a lot of different um, varieties and versions of Doppelbach. Um, you know, uh, pretty much ranging from your big boldies, um, you know, like kind of like your Trogonators, even uh, to a certain extent, I believe the Sam Adams um, uh, Doppelbach gets a little bit bigger. Your uh, Iyengar uh, Celebrator, and like I said, pretty much my personal singular Mount Rushmore of Doppelbach. A little bit lower in ABV like this. I think this is actually the same ABV as Iyengar Celebrator 68, I think, that might be six, 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 seven, somewhere right around that range. 
um, that's kind of where the wheelhouse is for me. And then you have the ones that are a little bit lighter. Your Salvatore um, uh, Pollinator. Uh, those kind of beers that tend to come off a little bit kind of more Maybach in color, a bit lighter, a bit thinner. So there's a wide berth of interpretation when it comes to a Doppelbach. No, they talk about an Austrian Doppelbach. I don't know if that's an actual style. That's where I think they're kind of leaning into their homage of a celebrator. And what you're getting here is kind of just like an Americanized version of that. From the mouthfeel to body to the richness of the beer, you're pretty much spot on with what a celebrator gives you. It's soft, creamy. Mouthfeel, initial mouthfeel, which I think is almost paramount for me to really enjoy Doppelbach, but you get that nice lager clean finish on it. So it has this fullness that finishes a little bit snappy, which is kind of like a cool trick to pull off. That brown breadiness, the richness, that kind of dinner in a glass kind of thing going on. But you have a subtle variance here. You have probably a little bit touch more spiciness to, to it. And it just, just the volumes just ticked up, not audash, uh, audaciously, audaciously is the word I was looking for there. It's not like, okay, we're just going to take this beer and just go infinitely crazy on a Doppelbach. It's just taking a little bit of that kind of um, maltiness, that little bit of spiciness, that little blackstrap molasses -y thing we're talking about, all that. And instead of going from like a six to an 11, we're going from a six to a six and a half to six to maybe a seven, where you're getting a little bit more richness, a little bit more boldness, a little bit more more for lack of a better conversation, because um, how are you going to have a better conversation in Doppelbach? But um, I think it's delicious, honestly. It is, without a doubt, one of the best Doppelbachs I've had in quite some time. Mount Rushmore status, but let's go a step further. Americanized. There's some really great American Doppelbachs out there. I mean, like I said, I started this off talking about Celebrity, but quickly pivoted to, um, you know, both Trogues and Sam Adams, who I think make two of the best Doppelbachs in the game, regardless of nationality. I believe this is up there. Very truly. And easily up there. Mm. That's freaking delicious. One of my favorite styles. And just a beer that just, you know, when someone makes it, when someone makes a Doppelbach, I get excited. When someone makes a really tasty one, I get very, very excited. And that's why I'm excited now. Because, you know, to to drink a beautiful, well-done, rich Doppelbach out of a can is just a bizarre thing, you know. Do they make Trogan? They have to put Troganator in cans now. Last time I had it, it was in a bottle. Um, Santa Adams Doppelbox used to come in those weird kind of 500 mil bottles. That's the last time I had one of those. Celebrator. It's been ripping those since the beginning of uh, December. Always in bottles. How are you going to hang one of those little dangly little ornaments off a can? I don't know. I hope they never do. Not that I'm a... Uh, uh, I don't want things in cans. I just, it's not a Celebrator unless you get that little goat. And um, this is now kind of in that, in that Doppelbox kind of Mount Rushmore, like I said, for me. Very high hopes going into this, especially with the Austrian thing, especially the ABV. Me, my assumption of their homage towards Doppelbach. And I think that's a little bit harder road to hoe. You know, more often than not, when you high, have high expectations, your greater falls, greater letdowns. And that's not the case here. It's actually the opposite. It actually meets and, if not exceeds, what I hope for in a very, very tasty way. Now, I just want a, 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 a triple Bach version of this Asian Barrels. So, Brian, get on that, and that will be delicious, and I want... Don't send me one can of that. Send me a, a cask of that or something, please. Um, so, there you go. No. Um, in the grand scheme of things, this is a delicious beer. And here's the weirdest part. I don't know their distribution. You know, pretty much Pariah was, you know, San Diego through and through. You know, several months ago they moved... Actually, it's almost been a year now since they moved, I believe, um, to Maryland. Um... Uh, and this one actually says brewed and canned by um, Pry Brewing, Baltimore, Maryland. All the cans that I've gotten from them since their move has says San Diego and Baltimore. So maybe they're fully moved into Baltimore. Maybe they just only made this one in Baltimore. I don't know. But anybody, has anybody had this beer? Has anybody had this beer? Have anybody been in the brewery in Baltimore? Ha Where is their distribution at? What's the footprint for this beer? How is that stuff going here in the east coast i don't know so what is your experience with pariah have you had them on the west coast have you had them on the east coast have you been to either of the spots have you had this beer in particular and if you had 
What did you think? Down there, let's talk about it. Doppelbox rule the world. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hope to see you next time. Cheers, y'all.